Hi, I'm JP from Ijira 21 and this is our real world test Kawasaki's KX250X. exactly as it left the uh, the final lap of that test that, that enduro um haven't even cleaned it a few days after the event this is now and the bike's still uh, still got the dirt on it so what did i do to the bike what did i fit to the bike well basically the plan was always and will be with these kinds of tests is to take the bike straight from the manufacturer and ride it in in basic standard form now the caveat for that is sometimes it doesn't quite fit the bill so in this case i fitted some Polysport handguards because the uh, event has an awful lot of uh, on the going, there's an awful lot of trees, so uh, a little bit of hand protection is a good idea. Um, and I also fitted some, uh, just put some tape around the levers just for a little bit of extra grip. And because uh, this time of year in November in Northern Europe, it can be a bit cold and that kind of thing just keeps you, your pinkies a little bit warmer. Um, the other thing that I've done is get rid of the inner tubes out of the tires because um, I know from experience at that event that using tubes is a, a bad idea you get punctures so I fitted um, a set of medium mooses uh, and these are the standard uh, in this part of the world these are the standard D, uh, Dunlop AT81 uh, enduro spec tires that come with the bike um, and that setup works pretty well for me though um, the, the going is um, largely sand and a little bit loamy in places but it's a medium sort of tire and moose setup suited me fine it's good enough for me for sure <laughs> um, other than that i didn't do anything i did a little bit of noodling about on the internet to see what other people other magazines and other places of what people had done with suspension and i uh, kind of it, the changes that i read about weren't really that much weren't going to make that much difference to me in an enduro so i just went with the standard setting the, one of the problems i had with the bike was not having any time on it before i went to the race so basically yes, i set off when my, when my when my time clicked up i set off with the other three riders and we had probably five minutes of ten minutes at most um, riding through the trees and I was straight into an enduro test and, and I immediately didn't quite feel happy enough with the front end suspension setup. I felt good but it's a difficult task to turn up on a, at an enduro on a bike you've not really ridden before, um, certainly not recently, uh, and suddenly go right go bang! So one thing I found in that first enduro test is I, I kept I kept losing the front a bit and there was a little bit of, a, a little bit of that going on on the launch test that we did a few months back um, I, I did have a bit of a problem with how hard the the front tire felt and I, th I thought at the time it's because there was just too much pressure in the tires but I think there's generally just a little bit of a setup thing about um, too much height in the fork basically I felt too 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 far removed from what the front tire was doing so on the first lap of the going after the test I then had uh, you know another um, I don't know what it was 12 14 miles or something to do on the on the going before i had to get back to the pits before the time check and during that lap it was a slack it was slack on time so during that lap i did i just gave it a bit of thought a bit of concentration on how the front end felt and i stopped a couple of times and, and changed the clickers a bit and all i all i did in the end was change um softened off the compression a bit and pulled the forks through a little bit on the um Parked it on a log a little bit like this out in the trees and did it and just dropped that through um, one more ring. It comes as standard with just on one on the first ring. I just dropped it through the same amount to give it a few more millimeters um, up. It still wasn't quite right, if I'm honest. Um, so it, it would need the preload 
changing um, ideally but I, I didn't really have the facility to get the bike up and start checking um, checking those kinds of things and um, I wasn't confident in my ability to set the bike up any better so I had it had it feeling a bit better and I started to ride a bit faster in the time test so I can't complain about how I changed the suspension overall the suspension is one of the biggest and best things about this bike apart from the fact that it's quite a small bike um, and it feels in your control the chassis and everything feels in your control the riding position is really good for me as a six foot plus 170 centimeters in new money tall guy the riding position is really good comfortable neutral there's a lot of standing up in this enduro so i felt you know at the end of the day i didn't feel like i had a terrible back ache from leaning too far forward or any of those things i felt comfortable riding it but generally one of the overriding things about this bike and why i gelled with it so well is because the standard suspension worked so well in that kind of fairly rough enduro going fairly fairly rough conditions at times a lot of a lot of riders making this making the course quite weak out in places um, in the actual test there was a lot of um, places where you needed to work quite hard physically and for me this sort of more motocross spec suspension i guess you would say um, suited me the bike the bike rides the bumps well it controls how the wheel the back wheel and the, the, the bike is sort of flowing across those rough sections and i felt like i could hit some of the tougher rougher parts of the track hard um, and confidently uh, and, and, and therefore i was riding a bit faster it's as simple as that so for me the suspension and the chassis setup is um, it works really well for enduro tests and i enjoyed it the other positive thing um, from this bike is that kind of more motocrossy spec feel to the engine but there's a bit more fire in the belly than some of the other 250f models enduro models that are on the market and i i like that i i, I got on well with the with the, the power character uh, and how it delivered a nice punch out of the corner so it's um it helps you to do help me to go on in the test and ride and ride a bit faster than perhaps I, I i would otherwise or have done in the past on different bikes that suspension i was talking about that if you combine that with a a fairly punchy 250 i suppose basically motocross derived engine it's it it gives you that fire that you you want sometimes in this kind of enduro test so you know there's a reason why a fair few people in time card enduros use the use the motocross spec bike motocross spec engine you know when we walk around um some of the world championship paddocks or european enduro championship paddocks same in gnccs there's people using motocross parts in their enduro bikes uh, and the reason for that is to have that little bit more fire in the belly a little bit a bit, bit more oomph and I enjoyed that element about this bike. I, it, it suited me quite nicely in the tests to um, to have a, a stronger pull from a 250F. So it's still still relatively docile. It's not like coming here on a on a 300 two-stroke or a 450 four-stroke or anything. It's still uh, still a bike. The, the docile nature of the 250F is still there in your favour. But there's a there's certainly a bit of fire in this bike that was um, well, it was fun ultimately and, and confidence-inspiring. A couple of other things to mention. One of them is the, uh, the side stand on the launch test that we did of the 450 and 250 models. I wrote about how I, I kept catching my foot on here as I was riding. I kept catching my heel on the inside. Um, and while I, I didn't have too much trouble with that in the event, um, I did sometimes, uh, sometimes in the, in, the, in the going, I would be where you're standing up and I just take a dab with my foot because I, I lose the front a bit or something like that. I did find when I was bringing my foot back on, I could be catching that. So for me, that 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 side stand, kicker stand, sticking right out there. It stands this side of the side panel there. It's, it's, you know, it's, it sticks right out. It, it might just be me, but it's a thing that probably, if it just had a little bit of a bend or two in there and just curved in a little bit, so it was just this much further in, for sure, that would be better for me personally. It sticks out there a bit too much. The other thing uh, is gearing. So many people will know that motocross derived um, enduro bikes often 
have a five speed gearbox rather than a six speed um, and it, it makes a bit of a difference in an event um, you do notice it um, for sure most noticeably on where it's faster so there are times in the event where I was um, topping out in fifth gear running out of top speed I could have done with a bit of a bit longer legs as they say a bit more speed a bit more relaxed on those faster stretches um, and I, I think I'm right in saying I don't know I used first gear all day long um, that may be in the pits where you're supposed to ride at walking pace but certainly in the in the lap or uh, in the testers I don't remember using first gear all day long so for sure I could afford to change the gearing if this was my bike I'd go I'd be going a couple of teeth bigger on the on the rear sprocket or change the front or try, you know just try different things different sizes just to have a bit more speed a bit more length um, in the gearing so that I could carry more speed without being flat out for two or three minutes on a long stretch of open of open fire road or this kind of thing definitely worth pointing out the gearbox I thought it was awesome there are, there are some bikes that you, you, there aren't too many bikes in the world these days that have got a bad gearbox in my opinion anyway but this this transmission in the in the Kawasaki's engineers have put put together a really peachy peachy gear shift gear gear change mechanism and it was it feels really precise and um, I remember thinking a few days lot a few few times during the day that's really nice I feel you could feel the sort of precision of it and the the accuracy of every gear change was right there all the time overall I think I was riding around in third and fourth a lot so I was forever going just up and down one gear two gears at most sometimes up down up down. But it's, it's a precise feeling gearbox and well done Kawasaki engineers. Fuel. Some people might be interested to know about the fuel. Um, as ever, I think I'd prefer to have a tank that I could see where the fuel level is. Uh, but it did prove to be fairly economical. There was um, probably, an, I did, during the course of the day, I filled up once. I started with a full tank and I filled up halfway through. So I did two laps on, from what I could see, on something like, Two thirds of a tank, something like that. Um, so I had plenty left after two laps, and that would be uh, about an hour and a half riding, something like that. So it took, it went quite a long way, um, about an hour and a half riding uh, on uh, what, what was in the tank, and I had plenty left at that point. And I know I, I topped it up again for the for the final two laps. Brakes are good, front and rear. I've got no real complaints. It's a good feel from them. They're a standard part that. Um, they're fitted to many bikes, the Nissan calipers and the setup and it, um, braking discs, I believe. Looking at that, looks like a braking disc. Brrr, yes, uh, it's good. It's good feel and good control. The only thing that I would say is the come round here, come this way. There is right. So personally, I, I prefer not to have too much gap between where the lever bites strongest and the, and my knuckles. I prefer it to come in a bit more. And I basically ran out of adjustment there. I couldn't make it come to me any closer. So it was a little bit far out for me. It's only a small minor point, And maybe with a bit more mileage on the bike, it wouldn't be a problem. But for me, having a lever too far out is a recipe for, can be a recipe for arm pump. That's while we're up here, actually. This is the, the time card. Yeah, a bit fly. So you can see in my class, I was in the expert vets. And the th we had four laps in total. And the first three laps were an hour and eight minutes. And that was pretty slack. It was pretty easy um, to get that one in. But the last one <laughs> was, was a crazy amount less. So it was a real big change. So you, as a rider, you're sort of you're gauging how quickly it's, you're going to get around a lap. And, and by the sort of third lap there, sorry, I should also say in the first three laps, that also included the time test, which took... Uh, took about seven or eight minutes out of your whole lap. Um, so amongst that 108 time allowance for that lap, you also had to do the time test. And then on the final lap, which was a bonkers 33 minutes, you didn't have to do the test, but it was just unbelievably fast. It, it, I didn't make it. Uh, I don't think anybody did in my class. And I think the championship level riders, they had, um, 31 minutes to do it in maybe i can't quite remember anyway they had a minute or so less than us and i think only four or five people made it in on time nobody else did it so that was a tight one from the club one thing you might have spotted already is there are no lights on this bike and some races some events um, the regulations say that you must have lights 
um, which is a little bit of an antiquated rule in my opinion. It's um, it doesn't make much sense if you're riding on a on a closed course. Um, I'm not riding in the dark. Bike doesn't need to be registered, so there's no real need for it to have lights. Um, so uh, the long and the short of it is not having lights fitted, you get docked time penalties for each light. 30 seconds for the front, 30 seconds for the back. Fortunately, indicators aren't part of that equation, so I didn't get docked another um, four lots of 30 seconds. Um, and in any case, I was wanting to test the bike as it comes. It's, it, it comes from a manufacturer exactly like this, so I wanted to test it in that way. And um, it's my decision uh, to go to the event <coughs> without the lights fitted and, and, and I knew all along I'd get a, a time penalty. It's just one of those things you think, mm, what's the point of that? But anyway, I should add, lights are available. You can get them, um, obviously you can get them aftermarket, but uh, Kawasaki uh, will certainly, or Kawasaki dealer will certainly be able to fit them for you or point, them, point you in the direction of how you can do it yourself. So it is an option available to you. And uh, in actual fact, Right next to me in the pits at this event, there was another guy on a, on a slightly older one of these, and he, he had fitted his own lights. He was a little bit, um, I think he said it was, what was his description? Heath Robinson, a little bit Heath Robinson. The backlight looked like it was from a, a mountain bike or something. But anyway, it, the rules are the rules. You must have lights fitted. So he just fitted uh, any old rear light he could get his hands on. So that was one thing. It's worth pointing out. Some events, you will need lights. Maybe the ones with antique rules. There's one more thing in here. I don't know if you can hear that. Not a big deal. But there's a chain roller there, which is um, designed to catch, and it clearly has been catching the chain when the when the rear suspension is really um, compressed. It's a roller there, a little ro roller on a bearing. It's really noisy, and you can often hear it when you're riding along. You can hear it as you're going along. It's just rattling away like that sometimes. Rattle, 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 rattle. rattle. It's a, it's not a, not a major thing at all. It's not affecting performance in any way. It's just a thing that's constantly that you can hear it rattle, rattle, rattle. That's just about it. Um, overall, what can I say? The bike is I gelled with it. You know, it sort of suited me as as two fifty four strokes kind of always do. If I'm honest, I, I really do enjoy the feeling of having um, not too much power. And feeling, you know, that kind of you feel like you're a boss of a bike like this, and I certainly did gel with it well. But it's it's to its credit, the chassis, the sus the standard suspension, the f the slightly pun punchy engine engine feel from the from this Kawasaki motocross engine, um, all those things kind of combined to make me feel. I I enjoyed the ride, so I think whenever you're enjoying the ride and feeling confident to um, on a beaten up track where there are whoops and bits of it where you you've got to, you've got to try a bit harder to go a bit faster when the when the chassis and the bike is is letting you do it without complaining too much then um, that, that makes for a good enduro bike and and that's an important thing to say you know it does come from the motocross bike there's no doubt about that and when you look at it on the spec sheet you would think right it's just got four or five things that have been added to make it an x model but it works for an enduro bike, and there are plenty of people. The reason why the reason why Kawasaki made this model in the first place is because they noticed that people were taking their motocross bikes, fitting a different size rear wheel, maybe some lights, and making it work for enduro. So they just went with the trend, really, and thought, right, okay, people are doing that. We'll we'll follow that. So uh, the, for me, they did a good thing because they built a bike which works for enduro tests. I enjoyed it. I had a good result. I went from uh, at this event, I think in the past, I've, I've probably done it five or six times years in a row now. And in the past, I've been, I don't know, fifth, sixth, seventh in the, in the tests at best. Um, but this year, I think I was up there. I put in some really good, for me, some enduro, good enduro test times. And, and I think the difference um, was this bike. I felt confident on the rough stuff. I felt in control of it, switching through the trees. Everything worked well. And I enjoyed myself when you're happy and when you can hit things and then a bit harder and, and get away with it without too many complaints from the bike, then for sure that makes a good bike, a good enduro bike. That's it for this test. Um, like I said at the beginning, the whole idea really is to do try and do more of these, but for sure we need your comments and your feedback. So 
go down in the comments below and tell us if you enjoy this kind of test review or not, if it's worth us doing it on Enduro 21 or not, whether you enjoy, prefer us to keep it on the website and keep it, um, keep it there. Um, for me, it, it was a, a good experience testing this bike in a, in a real world test. You know, it's important to make you understand that we go from, um, from sitting at a desk to, you know, a manufacturer takes us somewhere and we ride a bike and we do these tests that are in their pockets but it's it's super important for us to to do uh, do this real world thing and take a bike into the woods into the mountains wherever we go do the riding ourselves put the bike in our own in our own van in our own box trailer and, and get out there and do the riding so the idea of this real world real world is 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 that we we are doing the do the honest thing and taking the bike away from the guys in the green shirts in this case and, and giving it a test so if you want to see more of it, let us know. Rattle, rattle, rattle. Maybe I need a better. Maybe we need a better presenter. Rattle, rattle, rattle. Shuffle that one. Bullshit. Fuck. Rattle, rattle, rattle. I got a wet backside, man. <laughs>